Hello everyone, this is David from Automotive Press. I have a very exciting and interesting video for you today because I'm going to answer the age-old question whether or not cars built in Japan is actually better built than those built in North America. I have the story of two RAV4. One is a RAV4 Prime built in Japan in the Takaoka factory. And I also have a RAV4 Hybrid that's built in Ontario, Canada. The two are almost identically equipped about the same year, this is a 2021, this is a 2020, and they have been used under the same circumstances. They both belong to my company as part of the company fleet. So I have been driving both of these cars for a while, so I can tell you exactly what the differences are in terms of manufacturing quality, both for exterior and interior. Let's get into it. Welcome back. So I have two RAV4. One is a RAV4 Prime built in Japan. One is a RAV4 Hybrid built in Ontario, Canada. And I'm going to check the quality of the exterior panels in terms of alignment and gap to see if there are actually difference between the one built in Japan and the one built in North America. So I'm going to use my simple uh, instrument here, which is a gauge, to look at the gaps between the panels. So I'm going to look at the one that's built in Japan first and take a look at this one. So if I were to look at the gap between the hood and the front fender, uh, as you can see, it's only three millimeter for the built in Japan RAV4, which is unheard of. Usually it's about four to five millimeter in terms of the gap. And also from the front to the back, the gap is exactly the same. So it's three millimeter in the front, three millimeter in the back of the hood. Let's take a look at the uh, RAV4 hybrid, which is built in Ontario, Canada. And you know what, it's very similar, but this is four millimeter in terms of gap. Front and the back is also four millimeter, but toward the back of the hood, it's actually 4.5 millimeter. So first of all, the gap is about 25% wider here than the one in Japan, and then it's not quite as consistent. Having said that, of course, 4.5 millimeter uh, from uh, front all the way to the back, more or less, is still within the benchmark because usually it's about five millimeter in terms of the gap. But it does show how exceptional the Japan built RAV4 is. It's hard to believe they can actually produce a panel with only three millimeter in gap. That's almost impossible. Now let's take a look at between the front fender and the front door. In the Japan built RAV4, it's about 3.5, once again, world class. And here it's four millimeters. So only half a millimeter difference, but is the one built in Japan a bit better than the one built in North America? Yeah, so far that's the case. Let's take a look at a couple more gaps here. Here is 3.5 millimeter and four millimeter again. So again, half a millimeter difference. And same thing here, 3.5 and about four. So either way is very consistent. That's the most important thing. If I were to look at the gap between the rear hatch and the D pillar here, then it's about four and a half millimeter here, and it's about five and a half millimeters. So once again, across the board, the RAV4 built in Japan has about 10 to 25% tighter fit in terms of the panel alignment, in terms of gap. It's also a little bit more consistent but the one that's built in Ontario, which is RAV4 Hybrid, is also very good. There's nothing wrong with this. So at least in terms of body alignment and body integrity, and in terms of the gap, the one that's built in Japan is slightly better than the one that's built in North America. Not by a huge amount, and the one built in North America is still very good. But there's no question that uh, Japanese seems to know how to build the body panels a little bit better than the one in North America. Now let's take a look at the paint finish and the paint thickness to see if there are any differences between the two models. Now I have been looking at both of these models outside and also indoor to look for paint quality and I washed them using the same material so that one doesn't get more of a, a wax feel than the other one. And you can tell that there is a little bit of a difference again. Uh, granted, they're both a blizzard pearl, so very good paint job to begin with. And most people will be happy with either of the paint job. Uh, but there is no question that uh, one that's built in Japan has a little bit more gloss 
and a little bit less orange peel, and the paint seems more consistent between the plastic injection parts and the metal part. So between the bumper and the front fenders, for example, this one has a little bit more of a difference in color. This one is closer together. As you move back here, uh, the paint job is again quite similar, but I would say the built-in Japan RAV4 is about 10% better than the one that's built in North America. Both are very good, good gloss, no pigmentation or ox oxidation problem, no excessive orange peel and so forth, and then all the plastic components fit very well as well. But in my trained eye as an automotive engineer, I can tell that this side is about 10% better than this side. Now let's measure the paint thickness to see if there's any difference between the two models. So now I have the paint thickness gauge, which measures the total paint thickness in microns. You want the paint thickness to be between 100 to 180 microns. That's the standard. Thicker the better, of course, but you don't want it too thick because that can also indicate that there was uh, repair work done on the paint. Let's take a look at the built-in Japan RAV4 first. It's 110 microns on the front hood. Let's look at the one built in Ontario. 106, so very close, but a little bit thicker on this side. What about the front fender? 112 on this side. 112, exactly the same. And then the doors. 104. 116, so it's actually a little bit thicker on the one that's built in Ontario. Let's take a look at one more here, rear fender. 108. 130, so actually surprisingly, the paint is a little bit thicker on the one that's built in North America. Finally, let's check the top paint here on the roof. 174. 154, so it's actually a little bit thicker on the RAV4 Prime. Now the paint is much thicker on the roof than the rest of the body because it has additional black paint. And you can tell right away from a thickness, it went from about 110 to 150 because of the additional layer of paint. Either way, I would say the two are more or less the same. A little bit thicker in some cases here, a little bit thicker in some cases on the Prime side, but for the most part it's identical and they're all within 110 to 170, which is what I expected. They don't put more paint on it because they're trying to save money as well. I did notice when I look at the plastic components, whether it's the headlight, some of the bumper trims, and also at the very back, the one built in Japan has a little bit more gloss finish to the components. So for example, if you look at the front fender here, or some of the rear bumper areas, I can tell that the glossy black portion is a bit shinier and smoother in paint for the one that's built in Japan than Ontario. Now, to be honest, I'm getting really picky here because for the most part, the two are more or less identical. An average buyer wouldn't be able to tell the difference because they're going to look more or less identical in the showroom. Now, let's take a look at the interior to see if I can tell the difference in terms of fit and finish uh, and also the quality of the plastic injection parts between the one built in Japan and the one built in North America. So now I'm in the RAV4 Prime. So this is the one that's built in Japan at a factory called Takaoka Factory. I've been to that factory a number of times. Excellent factory where many of these RAV4 type models are produced. And I'm looking at the interior and doing some punch tests here to see if I can replicate some squeaks and rattles. You know what, it's being solid. I never heard a single rattle or squeak while driving this for the past year and a half. And all of the stitching and the component seems to fit excellent. You can't really get any better than this. It's a first class manufacturing quality from Japan. And I tried to measure some of the gap between the parts and components, but you know it's a little hard to do that with plastic injection molding, mainly because they fit so well. And then most importantly, the plastic injection uh, texture on top of the dash and also over here are very good. I did notice that sometime there is a subtle difference between plastic injection parts for cars that are built in Japan versus those built outside Japan because the texture is a little bit more consistent, a little bit more matte finish. It looks more like a real leather than components that are built somewhere else. But overall, the interior fit and finish is excellent. I give it a solid A+, along with the exterior, which I also give A+. Now let's take a look at the one from the North American built RAV4 and see if I can notice any difference in terms of the feel, the texture, or the fit and the finish. So 
So now I'm in a raft for that's built in Ontario, Canada. And this particular factory is one of the best in the world. It has won many awards. It produces Lexus in addition to Toyota products. And I've been to that factory a couple of times. And you know what? It's always been a very impressive manufacturing facility. But is there a difference in the quality and fit and finish between the one that's built there compared to the RAV4 Prime, which is built in Japan? Well, in terms of the gap of the components and panel alignment, everything looks about the same. Uh, because of the way they design cars these days, it's really hard to tell misalignment because there isn't too many straight lines in which you can see the misalignment. And also I'm doing the punch test, but nothing is loose. It's just as tight as the one that's built in Japan. And I have been driving this one also in comparison to the RAV4 Prime, and there's not a squeak or rattle anywhere in sight. So it's very solid. Now, of course, this one drives in hybrid mode compared to electric mode in the Prime. So it's generally speaking noisier on the road. Now I'm looking at the parts component and plastic injection texture to see any difference. And you know what? It almost looks identical. Would I say that there is slightly better texturing and surface finish on the one that's built in Japan? Maybe a small minuscule amount. You know, we're talking about two to five percent difference uh, because that one has a slightly different texture for the uh, instrument panel here and the top of the dash and it does look a little bit more upscale because the um, the surface texture is just a slightly different feel but most people will never be able to tell that difference and obviously there's no squeaks or rattles or anything that indicate there could be manufacturing fit and finish issue so i would say this is an actual draw that one is an a plus in terms of interior i will give this one a soft solid A and I will also give a solid A for the exterior. So we're looking at a very minor difference between the RAV4 Prime and the RAV4 Hybrid. So you take your pick. They're both very well made and for the most part there's very little difference between the two models. Now of course there's a lot more to this science of figuring out whether cars built in Japan is better than the one built in North America. But you have to drive, you know, five or six years to figure out whether reliability becomes an issue for the one that's built in North America. So we can't do that right now. But when you look at survey results from JD Power or from Consumer Report or other sources, for the most part, there's a negligible difference between cars built in Japan and cars built in North America. But as you can tell from my investigation and from my inspection, there is a subtle difference in terms of the aesthetic side of thing, like paint finish, the plastic injection texture, the gap between the panels, uh, and so forth. So there is some subtle difference, not enough to say that you should buy cars only built in Japan versus built in North America, at least for Toyota. For other brands such as Honda or Nissan, the difference might be bigger. And for those brands, I did notice there's more of a factory difference between those built in Japan and those built outside Japan. But for Toyota and Lexus model, I think we can conclude the difference is minimal and you don't need to worry whether or not buying one that's built in North America is going to be troublesome. Now, when it comes to handling new model introduction, such as the Toyota Tundra, you know what, I have to think about that a little bit more because the Tundra had its share of problem in its new product launch. Whereas I think in Japan, new model launches are handled really, really amazingly well. So if you're buying a brand new model in its first year, I will have to say that the products made in Japan is likely safer to buy than those built outside Japan. So I hope this was helpful for you to determine once and for all whether or not there's an advantage in buying a product from Japan. Now for me, I do own cars from both sides of the Pacific Ocean and for the most part, it's not noticeable. Am I a little bit biased toward cars built in Japan? Of course I am because I was born and raised there and I worked in Japan and I have nothing but the highest respect for Japanese production workers and Japanese engineers. But for average worker, I don't think you need to worry. I don't think it really matters either way. And you can decide based on what makes you most comfortable. Anyhow, I'm signing off for now. A lot more to come in my channel. Please subscribe if you can and hit the notification bell and comment if you have time because I really appreciate that. Until next time, I'm signing off. Thank you so much.